teaching these large classes, we're always looking for ways to um, keep the students interested. Um, and of course, one of those ways is to uh, just be entertaining, but um, the clickers came around and we were uh, one of the early people looking at those to um, try and get the students more involved. Uh, we do do team teaching in our lectures that, that helps keep them involved, but the clickers have really proven useful to uh, uh, make them pay more attention um, and get them actually thinking about uh, what, they're, what we're talking about on lecture. And of course, they also give us some really good feedback on what they do and don't understand as we go through a, a lecture. When we started looking at using clickers in class, we of course uh, sort of looked around at what other people are doing, uh, talked to various people that had used this in the past. Um, we even visited classes. I really enjoy uh, visiting classes that other people are teaching, both to see their technique and the technologies they use. Uh, so I think that's an important part of it, is to, to go around and um, see what other people are doing. Uh, figure out what makes sense in your context in the class and what resources you have and how your students learn. Uh, and factor all of that in, it's really a challenge to incorporating this technology. We have, um, we've looked some at the time it takes to do clickers as part of a lecture. It, just as a comparison, we have not changed our lectures from when we did not use clickers. So we're delivering the same content in the same amount of time, uh, but it is sometimes a challenge to figure out where to fit these um, uh, clicker questions into a lecture. We probably do four to five to six questions per lecture, um, and on average each question takes 30 seconds to a minute to get, get a response back. So it, you know, it takes sometimes five minutes out of a lecture, but that's I think it's good. It's a, it's a pause. It makes them think. Um, you know, they don't have to be scribbling down notes uh, that, during that time. So I think it's a good trade-off. The feedback we get from students on just the use of clickers is, is pretty mixed. Uh, some of them like it. They like to have a voice in lecture. Uh, but they're still sort of anonymous. They don't have to raise their hand and everybody knows that they answered a right or wrong question. Um, but they do have to think about it. They do have to um, uh, provide a response. Um, they don't like buying the clickers. Nobody likes you know, having to dish out more money for yet something else that's associated with the class. Uh, we've tried to be sensitive to that, but uh, we think it is enough of a value that, that it is worthwhile to have them. Uh, use this technology. The benefits, uh, of course, are getting them to actually participate in lecture actively rather than just passively. Um, I think that is, is by far the, the biggest benefit is, again, they have to sit and actually think about a response and give a response rather than just waiting for us to tell them an answer. Um, so that, that's probably the biggest benefit. Some of the things we like about the, the current turning point uh, clicker systems that we use, uh, one is uh, it does give students the option. Uh, they have the option of either selecting the dedicated clicker pad, uh, which is very easy to use, uh, uh, very simple, or they can also use uh, their um, any sort of web-enabled device, a phone, a PDA, or even a laptop. I think that's personally one of the things I really like about the system is it does give them that choice. Uh, the PDA phone sort of option is less expensive because they don't have to invest in any extra uh, hardware. Um, they always have their phones with them, so that's, that's sort of a nice advantage as well. The challenges sometimes are just the logistics, uh, of course making sure everybody has clickers, making sure everybody's set up correctly, uh, having to manage yet another uh, set of grades and uh, the, the technology sometimes you know, always has some issues as you're, you're going through a lecture.
ITC, of course, has, has run the um, pilot program to help us pick a clicker technology, um, and that's a good thing to have that standardized over the whole university. Um, we, we're sort of a special case in that we don't use Blackboard and aren't able to take advantage of some of the integration of the clickers uh, with Blackboard and, and that sort of thing. Um, where ITC could have helped us uh, and has, has done a lot of work, I know, to set that uh, system up. Um, and then just the logistics of making sure clickers are in the bookstore, um, that, that everybody knows sort of how to, how to get them and, and uh, manage that part of it is, is helpful as well. There, there's a lot of resources out there for using the clickers. The Turning Point uh, folks have a really nice uh, website with a lot of tutorials that uh, the students don't really take advantage of, but we've taken some advantage of that, uh, just the logistics of how to use them, uh, some of the strategies for what makes good types of questions and um, that sort of thing. Uh, so we've taken advantage of, of that sort of resource. Um, being able to discuss with other institutions, I think, would be, a, and, and again, Turning Point has some of this, but uh, being able to compare notes, really, with other people um, outside of our immediate vicinity would be helpful in, in um, just figuring out how to best use this, this sort of technology. One thing that I think you know, we might want to consider here at UT even is uh, uh, roundtable sorts of discussions amongst the people that, that are using them now that we're, we're really getting up to speed. I know we've done some of that, but I think those are, are very useful. Other faculty that are looking at using this technology, I think would be, first off, should evaluate whether it really makes sense in the context of their class. Uh, I think it's best used for larger classes, um, it does take some, some um, investment in time and, and learning to get up to speed and how to incorporate it without making a major impact on, on the overall class. Um, so they have to be willing to make that investment up front and I'd really suggest that they, they take, available, take advantage of the available resources both uh, from ITC in um, getting that uh, initial training and time as well as uh, talking with other people and, and figuring out how, how they, uh, they use clickers in their class. The technology as it is, I think, is evolving um, perhaps more as, as cell phones and uh, internet access on, on uh, handheld devices becomes more prevalent. I think the, the the, the natural evolution is going to be for these dedicated clickers to sort of go away as, as more people have access to, to small web-enabled devices. And I expect eventually, you know, everybody's going to have this sort of capability on their cell phone um, that doesn't, you know, have a significant cost with it and it would make it, you know, logistically uh, perhaps even easier to use and easier to incorporate in, in a more wide variety of uh, types of applications.